Big Ten can't have nice things. Can't have nice things. James Franklin can't have nice things. You're sitting here, you're on the eve of a top 10 matchup with Ohio State. You have a chance to, you know, if you win that game, you're still controlling your own destiny in the East. Earlier that day, you're going to have Michigan State and Michigan score off another top 10 matchup. All you've got to do is beat Illinois, who's been one of, if not the worst team in the Big Ten, and one of the worst in Power Five for the last 10 years. Now, I understand they beat Nebraska this year. This Illinois team, as Brett Bielema pointed out earlier in the week, was void of talent. They don't have the players. Penn State, while they're beat up, Sean Clifford ultimately played, didn't play terrible, and I know they have some other players out, but they're still significantly more talented than Illinois, and they're playing at home. They were coming off a bye week, so I don't want to hear this like look ahead crap where they weren't paying attention to Illinois. They weren't necessarily you know locked in with them. Like they had their shot, they were right there. They should have won that game. It shouldn't have been close. They should have been able to get Jahan Dotson over the top. And then when you get to overtime, not once in the seven pseudo overtimes did you just throw you throw one step fade to Jahan Dotson. You're trying to run all these plays, Philly, Philly. Clifford's not athletic enough. He's falling all over himself trying to catch the ball. And there's all these different issues. You have one of the best receivers in college football, James. Step back one step and just throw him the fade. Toss it out there. See if he can make a play. Maybe he gets a pass interference. Holding. Put that thing on the one-yard line. See what happens. Then you get another crack. But give your guy a chance. I can't believe at any point, if it had been one overtime or two, like you got the normals, but then once you're on the two-point conversions, at any point in time during those, that they didn't throw it up. Just toss it up to them to see what ultimately could have happened. They never did. And it is mind-blowing to think that you didn't give your guy a chance to do that. So James Franklin... Maybe he's got one foot out the door. You know, he might be looking at, you know, LSU, I think probably USC. You know, the, the word is on the street. His wife's been on Zillow for the last three years trying to find a place to get him out of there. Um, and there's a couple of big jobs opening up. And you know what? He goes 10 and 2, 9 and 3. I mean, he, he has a good shot at getting one of those. And I think even, you know, even if he goes 8 and 4, he'll have a pretty good shot at being able to land one of those big jobs. See him a little bit more out in California than I ultimately see him at LSU, but who knows? We'll see what what's offered out there and what choice he ultimately has. If he has a preference and if he is basically given the option between the school, two schools, that's one reason. Second reason is that the Big Ten can't have nice things is Purdue. Purdue, you've got it all set up. You beat Iowa. You beat them on the road. You know Now you have Wisconsin coming to home, coming to your house, a team that's very similar to Iowa. If you can get up on them early, you can get them out of running the ball. Put it on Graham Mertz to go beat you. He can't. Graham Mertz is not going to beat you. But ultimately, they're not able to do it. Wisconsin's able to pound the football to the tune of 290 yards. You lose the game 30 to 13. You have three interceptions. I mean, like it's 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 not, it's just not a great situation. Not a great situation at all. I mean, I'm sitting here watching this trying to figure it out. Like, why Purdue? Why, why aren't we? We should have some big plays to bell over the top. They should have been able to do that again. They couldn't execute, and they could not stop the run. And I know that they can't run the football. They had negative 13 yards. It takes a special type of inefficiency, a special type of just a putrid performance up front to have negative 13 rushing yards. I know sacks are included in that, but it, it's unbelievable that that should never happen. It should never have been the case, but it ultimately was against wisconsin so purdue who just creeps into the top 25 looking good they beat iowa they're controlling you know their own destiny and then they ultimately lose i mean losing you know and then you've got the albatross you know just, you lost to notre dame like that's a quality loss people are going to look at that and say it's all right but you lose now to wisconsin like wisconsin might win the west it's going to be a mess we'll see i ultimately think minnesota probably gets it done which isn't the best for the big 10 You'd still want to have Iowa win out, who's ranked ninth, but you'll take what you can get over there. But you have two ranked teams, fall to teams that they shouldn't. In the Big Ten, just as you're about ready to push through, just as you're close, you can't do it, and you throw out a stinker there. 